The government is to look again at how changes to housing benefit will affect people with disabilities. Under the so-called bedroom tax, council or housing association tenants will see their housing benefit reduced from April if they have one or more spare bedrooms. The government says it's only fair to encourage people with extra accommodation to make way for those who don't have enough. But as our home editor Mark Easton reports, campaigners say the disabled should be an exception. So-called the spare bedroom. Hundreds of thousands of people, like school cleaner Manuela, are learning that their spare room will soon be an expensive luxury. Because this is the spare bedroom, as you say, there will be a 14% cut in your in your weekly housing benefit, um, which we have calculated, and it's approximately about £17. It's grabbed me a little bit like, oh my gosh, why are they making the me blue. do this, this kind of thing. Yep. So I get a little angry. From April, a government under-occupancy charge, dubbed the bedroom tax, will cut benefits paid to social housing tenants if their home is deemed larger than they need. The government says the charge helps families like the Pals. They must leave their privately rented home in a few weeks, but a lack of suitable social housing means they now face the prospect of being forced into overcrowded temporary accommodation. How many people must there be that a single person is in, say, a three-bedroom house. Why can't they put those people into maybe a, you know, a one-bedroom or, you know, or, or just something more suitable for one person or two people, you know, and then they'll, they'll free up lots more houses. The government calculates within the social housing sector there are 660,000 households under-occupying their home and 250,000 in overcrowded accommodation. So from April, people of working age with one spare room will lose on average around 12 pounds a week from their benefits and with two or more, about 22 pounds. The government's reasons for introducing their under-occupancy charge go beyond the efficient use of scarce social housing. They also want to use it to encourage people into work and to create a simpler and cheaper system. The government's decision has been that we can afford to support people in the bedrooms that they need, uh, but not um, to fund extra bedrooms. However, the National Housing Federation, representing social landlords, argues there are simply not enough smaller homes for all the people affected. We have a tiny supply and 660,000 households who are deemed to be under-occupying. They are being penalised for being poor and living in their own homes. Two thirds of the households affected by the change include someone with a disability. People like Peter Lamb, who suffered brain damage after a heart attack and is cared for by his wife, Julie. Because of Peter's condition, the couple cannot share a bedroom, but under the rules, the extra bedroom means their benefits will be cut. We're already in a situation where we're frightened to put the heating on because of the cost of energy prices. We're struggling to keep our heads above water and keep ourselves in the black. We're struggling to find the food to put on our plate at the end of the day. Um, I just, I don't know where it's going to end, to be honest. It's, it's really frightening. Do you want to test your bloods? Seven charities have written jointly to the government urging them to exempt people like Peter and Julie. This evening, the Welfare Secretary, Ian Duncan-Smith, told the BBC he's instructed his department to look again at the rules in such cases. Mark Easton, BBC News. The Liberal Democrats say they've launched a review of how to handle allegations of harassment.